Jesus, you keep us where you keep us in Jesus' name. We all say, Amen. amen. All right, let's take a seat. This morning, Amen. I was asked, I was going to put my discipleship off, but I was asked by my leaders to do a discipleship. So we're going to be obedient this morning. So um, we're going to look at First Peter chapter five. First Peter at chapter five. So. One of the basic understandings about discipleship is you're going to grow in the Lord. And if you, you say, well, many of you, even in the church world today, there's distinctions now in the church realms. Okay? There's uh, the people that come in who just want to be Christians, and there are those who want to be disciples. And there are the third sections where they're undecided, okay? And they are, may attend church, may come to church, sit there and hear a sermon while they're trying to decide if they want to be a part of God's plan or just be happy to sit there. And then there are the Christians who come to church, who receive the Lord, and say, I want to be a Christian, meaning I'll do the normal stuff. I'll attend church, I'll love my wife and love my children, uh, I'll keep a job, and I will be good at my work, but I just want to be a Christian. And then there are disciples. Disciples are the committed ones. And then when we get into discipleship, there's, and I'm talking about this millennial time, since I've seen the change of discipleship started in the 2000s, okay? 1999 down was more about you were a disciple. There was no ifs and buts. So now in disciple, well, a person who wants to be a disciple, there are also three levels, okay? How many know which one are they? One of them is a distant disciple. Distant disciple. A close disciple. Okay, a committed disciple. And what's the third one? Come on, you guys. Tell me, tell, tell me. The one that's battling. <laughs> the battle, let's call it the battling disciple. The one who's in the middle. Okay, cancer, he wants to be distant or he wants to be close. Okay? So, now... Every one of us, and the purpose of discipleship, as Jesus took his disciples, amen, and he was going to teach them how to be shepherds, okay? Discipleship is about how to shepherd people, how you're going to work with others, okay? You're going to care about a person, right? So let's read um, 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to read verses uh, 1 through, I believe it is, 1 through 4. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and read it with just 1 through 4. I'm going to read it for you guys, okay? And the, uh, the elders who are among you, I exhort, I who... I who am also who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also partook of the glory that will be revealed. He says, The shepherd of the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseer, not by consumption, by willingness, not by, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you being examples 
to the flock. And when the chief uh, shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So, so here, Peter is sharing as time has gone on. Okay, let's look at uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 22. And, you know, I really don't think Peter wanted to be in leadership. He loved the Lord. Like many of you have a struggle, you know, well, uh, uh, I don't want to be a leader, but I want to be involved. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, because no one really knows or understands how to do the work of a shepherd. Okay, now, now I'm sharing my experience of my own personal life, not knowing what it meant to take care of other people. How many fathers do I have in here? How many fathers? Okay. You know how to take care of kids? Huh? Huh? <laughs> when you have them. Okay. Well, let me give you a description how men take care of children. Okay? Get the kid. Come on, let's go. Okay? You, they eat when you eat. Okay? And if they make a mess in their pepper, how long does it take you before you change it? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> the challenge of taking care of children seems like, well, I was there. But did you really put your intimate life into their lives? Okay? Because if you did, you would understand what being a shepherd is all about. Okay? And this is something that, and I can say the same thing. I was there for my kids. I would, no, 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 no. You weren't really there. All right? So it's challenging. So it's not just taking taking something up, even in your life, at the last moment. Because this being with Christ desires for his apostles or his disciples were to shepherd people. Were to go and work with people. It's something that none of us can relate to. Because when we think we are good fathers, really we're not. Because we talk about, amen, I love my children, I that, but you know what? One thing that we all have in common, we have an addiction. And if you didn't surrender that addiction for your children to sacrifice, then you didn't make sacrifices. I mean, here, I don't care if it's alcohol, whatever the case may be. So we can just throw that out the window right now. So here's what Jesus teaches his disciples. That because they maybe weren't addicted to certain type of drugs or anything. Maybe money and, and so forth. But they had their flaws and their issues. And when you're dealing with people, it's hard to work. It's hard work. It's very hard work. Okay? Because you're going to, like all the disciples, they had to learn how to get along with one another. That's right. All right. Now, as a father, you have disagreement with your children. Yep. And that, I'm not talking about when they get older. I'm talking about when they're younger. Okay? And you're going to have disagreements with other people that are in your lives. And if you don't know how to, how to find some common ground in your life, life is basically a big classroom, as one poet had said. Amen? Come on. And... When you're dealing with people, this is the hardest work that anyone can ever ask you to do. Because when you are, uh, when you're there and you're, and you're trying to be everything that God called you to, to this type of, we're not used to this type of work. True that, right. And the disciples came into the place exactly where you're at. Okay? They were watching their shepherd. Some of them just wanted to follow Jesus and go with the flow, and it was exciting times. He was doing miracles. He was doing all this, and they were good with that. And then there were others, amen, that wanted to do what Jesus did. Okay? Peter himself, as he writes this letter, 
Amen. And Jesus, remember what, Je what Peter did as a disciple. He forsook the Lord, was outspoken, and did all that he did. And then his way of doing things is, let's go fishing, chapter 21. Okay, that was his response to uh, his type of work. But Jesus begins to restore his life. In verse 15 of chapter 21, amen, he begins to share how he's going to restore his life. And what Jesus does is something that you and I, as men of God, if you're trying, we, we need grace. Okay? A lot of us don't understand grace. Okay? But when you begin to work with people, you will understand grace. Amen. You will learn to have compassion for somebody. Amen. And that's what discipleship is all about. That's what being a shepherd is all about. It's putting your needs aside and somebody else's needs first. That's right, amen. It's how do you help people, amen, when people don't understand how to do this type of work. Okay, if you have a love for people, or you have, are you like, I love what I'm doing. Sometimes it's rigorous, sometimes it's tiring. But I love what I do. And I look at each and every one of you, and you have the potential to do the type of the work that's called to be a pastor. Amen. But you can't see that. Everybody follow me. Amen. Well, Peter, Peter had the same problem. Peter writes, hey, as a fellow elder. Now you look at chapter 21 of, of the book of John, of the Gospel of John, Peter is not an elder no, at this particular time. He is a man who forsook the Lord. Remember Jesus told him, amen, chapter 20. Actually, Jesus, in Luke chapter 22, look, the Lord turns around and, uh, uh, Peter. Simon Peter, Satan has asked you to sit you as we. In other words, Satan is, wants to attack you. He's gonna, I'm gonna, Jesus is saying he has to confront his old way of living. You see, this, this training in your life, is about confronting the old way of your living so you can put your old life behind you and the new life ahead of you, what God has in store for you. Amen. And that's what discipleship is all about. It's putting one life behind and this new life in Christ ahead. Okay? And you have no idea. You struggle with it. Well, do I want this? Do I don't want this? Do I, I'm, I'm fighting it. Well, Peter begins to share the exact same thing. Uh, you see, as he's older in life, he shares about his life with Jesus and, and ministry. And he had disciples under him. After almost 30, 20, 30 years of ministry, now he can share about how long and what he went through, amen, in his particular life. As a disciple. Amen. Now rejecting everything that. You remember Jesus said. You know hey this night. You're going to disown me. You're going you're gonna to turn your back on me. No Lord I'll never do that. How many ever thought to yourself. I never did that. I would never turn my back on the Lord. Come on. But how many have. Yeah. Hmm? Well you served that you. Earned a certain kind of Grace. That Peter has. Because Peter did the exact same thing. Okay? He said, by the time Jesus told him, when the cock grows, crows at the third time, you'll deny me. No, I won't, Lord. I'll, I'll be here to the end. And all of a sudden, that's exactly what happens. Amen. Okay? So let's read this when Peter is being restored. All right? And... Uh, Verse, I'm going to read from verse 11 and we'll go down, okay? So we're, we're going to go through this and this discipleship. Usually when you guys go to discipleship, we're preaching, we're yelling, we're making a bunch of noise. And we're going to set this tone as a question and answers, okay? So if you have any questions, I don't know, we might have to go through a few segments here. So let's be patient, okay? So at this particular time, uh, uh, Peter goes out and he's... Fishing, Jesus comes out of nowhere and he finds him. And so Simon Peter went up and he dragged his net full of the large fish, 153. Although there were so many, or were so many, and the net was broken. 
And Jesus says, come and eat breakfast. And other disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was, uh, knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them, likewise the fish. And this was now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after raising from the dead. Now here comes Peter's confrontation. Okay, so it was that when the Lord ate, when he ate breakfast, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he answers, he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he says again, feed my lambs. Again, he says to, uh, uh, to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, I love you. You know that I love you. He said, tend to my sheep. Mm -hmm. Then a third time, Simon, uh, Simon, the son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he says to the Lord, and he says to the Lord, Lord, you know all things. You know that I do. You know, the question here is, how many times did Peter deny the Lord? Three, three, three times. So how many times now is Jesus asking? Three, three, three. Okay, the first time that when this little person came up, said, you are one of those disciples. He answers, okay, you can look it up for yourself, but in, the, in all four Gospels, Peter answers and says, no, it's not me. Okay? It was kind of like, it's not me. I don't know him. Then the second time, he came, he saw Jesus. And one scripture, well, I'll get to that in a second. They said, hey, you're, you're one of those disciples. No, that's not me. I don't know him. Okay? And so the third time when, and, and I'm looking at this through the Jewish perspective, okay? And the third time when he's sitting there, a little girl approached him and said, you want to look this, you know, you're with him. You're with uh, this man there crucified. You know, it's, you know him, that's you. No, it's not me. I don't know him. And he cursed. Not said, he cursed. Actually said a blasphemous word. And mm -hmm. took off run. One scripture says that he left bitterly. So when Jesus asked him a third time, it's more like when Peter responds, you know me, Lord. You know my failures. You know what I did. Don't hear about me so far. Amen. And so he begins to share his ordeal. When Jesus said, feed my sheep, most surely I say unto you, when you were young, now listen to this, when you were young, okay, when you were young, Remember when you were young, Rick? Mm -hmm. right? yeah. What can you go do, Rick? Huh? What can you do? You can ride scaffolds, you can run yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. And now, now what happens to you? When I was young, I can jump and high and jump walls and pick up houses and pick up cars and do whatever I want to do. Okay? Jump from 24 build up from a 20 foot place and land on my feet. <laughs> Jump off a roof like nothing. Do backflips. Okay? But ask me now. What about now? No. So this is what he says. When you're younger, you grit yourselves. Amen. Walk wherever you wanted to. Wherever you wished. But now that you are old, you will. when you're old, when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and another will grit you. And carry you where you do not wish. Now this is what, 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 the, the, what it signifies. He says, he spoke of the, of the uh, signifying by which death he'll be glorified God. And then he spoke to him and said, come follow me. So, so Jesus is giving him a prophetic word that actually he lived. You're going to live for a while, but you're going to be martyred. Okay, and we're going to stop right there because here you have the identification of a man or Jesus identifies his lifestyle of what he used to be. But don't worry, I got you. I've forgiven you because if you love me, all that's put aside. Now I'm going to give you my grace, my mercy, and you're going to live and you're going to serve me and you're going to do this type of work. You're going to be a shepherd. 
You're going to shepherd my people. Okay? Yes. When uh, Peter <clears throat> cursed after they uh, they were accusing him, did he blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Or he would just... It was more of himself. You know, you get mad at yourself. Yeah. Come on. Have you guys ever got mad at you and said something <laughs> dumb by yourself? Yeah. I'm stupid. <laughs> I can't do nothing right. Okay, I'm just making it soft so you guys know how you guys talk. All right, so so you you get mad, you may cuss in your brain, all right, but, or whatever it is. But but what Christ is showing is the true love He had for Peter, and Peter had that true love for Christ, but he failed him. And what Jesus is showing us is that there's always opportunity to make changes, to learn from your mistakes. And believe it or not, throughout history, if you read the biography of Peter, and it takes a lot of research, but this becomes how Satan always torments him. All right? And, and uh, this is uh, what Christ, is. So we try to bring an understanding what he desires from us, that this work that he has called us to do as disciples is to shape us into be shepherds. Okay, so let's let's look at what it means to be a shepherd because when when Christ calls you, when Jesus calls you, and we respond, the Holy Spirit will teach us how to and will guide us how to minister to the flock of God. Amen. Right now, who's your headship? I know me. I mean, in the home. Isaiah. Huh? We're director. Okay. What's his name? Isaiah. All right. Okay, and then. So the big responsibility lays down to who? Your director. And it goes down the line. Mm -hmm. You see, what you guys don't realize is that, you know what, no one I when they did that, when my pastor did that to me, I didn't want to be director. Oh, you know, I don't want that job. <laughs> right? Uh-uh. Because the responsibility, it takes responsibility and accountability, truthfulness, and, and, and all the Things that we have to struggle with in life. Now looking at you as a man. Okay? You're asked to be truthful. Okay? You're asked to be honest. Integrity. Open. Teachable. But you, st you struggle with lying. You struggle with what? Cheating. You struggle with self. You struggle with pride. You struggle with anger. Come on. You struggle with all those self-righteous self things in your life. Or right. ugliness. Unworth. No value. Those are the areas of your life that you struggle with. You're good at failing. You'd rather be ha you're happy as a failure rather than one who pursues God. Amen. Because pursuing God is too hard. It's way too hard. Okay? And so what we are, must learn to do this is what Peter says, okay? He says, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseer. Serving, what's that word? Serving me. Mm -hmm. Come on, what does it mean? To give up uh, your flesh. Give up no, no, what is serving? Give. Work, 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 work. Yeah. What am I doing? Serving. Sure. Oh, no, it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you're serving. Now the serving that we inquired for us to do is not something that you like. Okay? Us as servants, we serve you with the word of God. Amen. Serve you with prayer. Serve you with direction. Serve you with a place of living. Amen. Serve you with, you know, the elements that are in the home. And what are the elements? What? Water, heat. Air, food, shelter. Food, shelter. Yeah. Come on. Okay? And so, what is your responsibility? Maintain it. Keep, keep it up. Yeah. So, now, you, he says here that as overseer, one who has to watch over the flock. Because this is why God gives leadership. You have to have leadership. You know, there are some churches that don't have leadership 
and everything is in chaos. You know, my experience with a lot of people that come into our church, they're like, wow, this is a well-disciplined church. It's well organized. And sometimes we're not, how, long, how hard is it to keep it organized? Come on. <laughs> okay? You guys don't see what happens. You know, the church doesn't really see what happens in the background. Amen. That's right. But we were struggling with the roof and everything else. Some of you guys had come here late at night, had to sweep off the roof before the congregation got here. It was leaky, all kinds of stuff. With the water, this, we had to fix that. Sometimes things went messed up. They came in, the, the toilets were overflowing, the water was backed up, and we had to clean it. I mean, there's things that happen in the background that nobody sees. They just walk in, oh, it's just, okay, it's just church. Come on. But let's think about what an overseer must do. One who's trained to pray. One who's trained to give of himself. One who has to continue to work out his salvation. This is what leadership is all about. This is why many have a hard time being a disciple. Okay? Because leadership is a God-given gift. Amen. And it's given to those who are chosen to lead. Right. And what are we leading? We're, this is the whole purpose of God. When I was in charge, amen, or the responsibility was given to me, it started at steps. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> you take care of the flock. I didn't even know I was taking care of the flock. Okay? And my responsibility is to put to take care of everybody that was in this home. Amen. Okay? Amen. When I was a director. And I had I had no idea how to lead. Like many of us don't have an understanding what it means to be a disciple or a godly man, okay? And and before you can lead, you have to be a follower. That's right. And follower means disciple. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. So the work of leadership is not easy. You know, I hear I remember hearing some men say, Well, I'm a born leader. <laughs> but falter. When things go wrong, run out the door when things get hectic. Hide when things go bad in his life. Cry when you should be praying. But that is not a born leader. Okay? A born leader is one who knows how to lead others into what's right. Unto what, what the Bible teaches us. So as a spiritual leader, one has to come. And let me tell you about spiritual leadership. You're going to be tested. Right. You have to be tested. You have to be tested. And how many like to be tested? James chapter 1. What does James chapter 1 tell us? You can learn a lot about leadership in the book of James. Okay, you have to go through testings in your life before you could be a, a pastor, okay, or a disciple. You have to go through some things in your life. A disciple is always being tested, Good. always being tested. I mean, it seems like it never stops. This is what he says here in verse two: "My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials." And why? Where does verse 3 say? Knowing that the testing of your faith per, uh, produces what? Patience. 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 So what's the first lesson of discipleship? Patience. patience. Do you have patience? Come on. No. So we're going to stop at patience for a second. So the Word of God teaches us a good leader must be patient. This is what he says. Verse 4 says, But let patience have its perfect work. Is it perfect when you're going through it? <laughs> okay. Now, looking at the fact that Peter failed, looking at the fact that you're going to fail in life. How many have failed in life? Not where you're at, but life. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, I don't want to live on failure, but let's talk a little bit about Failures. In what capacity have you failed? Yes. I failed by 
family. Okay. I found God. I found, uh, well, the main thing I found God. I failed on all my accomplishments and in, in my work status. Okay. I failed marriage. Good marriage. Marriage. Well, yeah, I feel uh, in my life uh, uh, continuing my education and, and keep my job. Okay. Come on, somebody else. Yes. Children. Children. I feel my parents. Parents. My life. Yes. I feel uh, wife, kids, and work. Okay. Build my family. Come on. I felt it being a responsible adult. But you're just starting out, but we're hoping to get you there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Face for your responsibilities. Come on, you guys. I failed my friends. Come on, I see. You got 60 yeah, years under your yeah. belt. Yeah, many businesses and many uh, <clears throat> expectations from uh, family and friends. Okay. You see, when we talk about failures, okay, I remember sharing one time, and this is the truth. This is the truth. I'm 56 years old. Okay. Um, when I got saved, I was in my 30s. Okay. And by my 30s, I was a three-time loser. In my book. So, imagine failing how many times, I mean, some of you guys are a lot older, I mean, not older, but we're about the same age, but if you look at the lot that you, you face, you lose jobs, money, houses, repossessed cars, so responsibility is not in your forte, <laughs> okay? Marriage, no accountability, all right? Forsook your children, Okay, now you're paying child support. Okay, and not good at paying child support either. Come on, because why? What do we have? <laughs> so, so you forsook, amen, job, money, and all the responsibilities of the world. And adultery and marriage. Okay, if you look back, how many failures do you really have? See, I hear one, two, but you think about it up until the point of life. Because this is why you youngsters have to see what older guys go through because they've been through the failures. You know, in ministry, it's the same way. And there's purpose of that because we bring in this uh, undisciplined lifestyle, but now we're saved and we're still undisciplined to do what's right. That's right. Okay? And number one thing that most of us have in common in the world, we didn't like to be told what to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many jobs I got mad because I was I wanted to fight my boss. <laughs> how dare you want me here at a certain time? <laughs> so I'm like, get out of here. Let's throw down. Okay? Don't like to be told what to do. How many have had jobs and you want in the second day you wanted to be the boss? Come on. How many of you guys believe your way is the best way? Come on. Yep. Okay? So when you're, these are the issues of life as disciples have to be challenged and have to be worked with. Why do you think that, that now Jesus takes these 12 men? Now, later in life, Peter has the experience as as to turn to uh, the church and instruct the the leaders, maybe the pastors are under him, how to discipline or how to deal with people. We're talking about deal, dealing with people. How many get offended because someone challenges you? All the time. Okay, get offended because uh, testings and trials, as the Bible says, have to come. And each and every one of us must go through the, to the challenges of those life. God will test you. Okay? He's going to put you through that. And we have to take in mind that God 
God looks is how you respond to it. Now, many can't respond to it. So what you do, with, what's in your mind to do, what feels good to do when, when you're challenged with something, maybe I'm not saying this right. How do we respond when you don't want to do something? Shut down. Shut down. Get angry. Get angry. And sometimes what? Run away. Run away. Okay? That's how you respond to life. You run away. What did Peter do? He ran away. He ran away. That was his response. But Jesus begins to share with us about what it takes to be a shepherd. Now in John chapter 10, 10, or 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. Listen to this. Okay? The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. And he, listen to it, but a hireling, which is one who's there to get, just do the job, he who is not a shepherd is one who does, it says, one who does not own the sheep and sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and runs. Those are the born, those are the born leaders. I was born, I'm a born leader. No, what do they do when trouble comes? They see the wolf coming, what do they do? <laughs> Take off running. Let me tell you something. Any man, any one of you, you put a you put a rifle in your hand, or a 38 in your hand, or a Glock in your hand, you and your man, you got more power than take that away from me, what do you got? Run! You hear? Run away from responsibility. Run away from what God is dealing. Right now, God's dealing with you in the area of accountability and responsibility as a man, what you're supposed to do. Now, if you just want to be a Christian, that's fine. But let me tell you, Jesus shares this with many of his disciples he cares for his sheep daily. A shepherd continues to watch, feed, and protect his sheep. Amen. Okay? And he must deal, okay, with the greatest dangers as a, as a shepherd to watch sheep. Okay? In other words, he's there, and this is what pastoring or, or your leaders are to do. Leadership doesn't mean seclude yourself and stay away from people. Leadership does not give you the right to have your own time. Come on. Leadership means that you must be amongst your men, always caring, not sleeping, not doing, taking time for yourself. A good leader must be always alert. That's right. Because there's a, there's a, a wolf out there. A good leader must be on his toes. And if you're not doing that, then that, then that doesn't qualify you. How many hear me? Amen. Is that too hard for you? Because what your job is, it consists of, is daily watching, daily feeding, and daily protecting. You're not only watching your life, but you are watching out for your brother's life. Okay, these are the purposes of God. This is what Christ was doing with his men. Because the bigger vision was to what? Wait, wait what was the bigger vision? Come on. Come on, what's the bigger vision? Save your souls and more sheep. Huh? Shepherd more, Shepherd more, sheep. Sheep. more sheep. That means take care of the church. Okay? And so... You have to understand that there's an enemy. He is called the thief, the evil one. And what does the e evil one do? What does Satan do? There are men who are evil out there, pretenders, hirelings. They come in and they pretend to care about people. But minute adversity comes, they run. Minute something happens in their life, they, they lose their mind. They don't know how to handle pressure. They run from pressure. Come on, some of you know what it means that when things come in your way and pressure comes, what the first thing you want to do is run away. They spread darkness. Darkness meaning sin. 
They walk around puffed up and think, oh, look at me, look at me. But in reality, inside, they're scared little boys. Are you here? Yeah. See, and they're out for their own interest. You see, the shepherd knows. Let me tell you something what, what a good leader knows. A good leader knows who's weak and who's strong and who's stubborn and who is submissive. Write those things down for you so you can understand this. You write those things down. You meditate on those things. You keep an eye on these things and challenge your life. My leaders, my pastor used to tell me all the time, this is where you need to be. Stop crying. Stop worrying. Stop this. I mean, be a man. Well, how does a man act? I don't know how a man acts. Well, Amen. What is the one thing? Don't let anyone use that weakness against you. Your failures, God will turn into glory. I don't want to start preaching now. But everyone has to understand. This is what Jesus said. The sheep know my voice. Because the shepherd's always in care with the sheep. Remember the story I gave you about this young man who was a farmer of sheep. I didn't know what sheep were. I mean, I knew what sheep were. And then I used to watch the, what do you call those, bed commercials with the sheep jumping over. Mm. <laughs> All right. But when you go and see what actually what their function is, to take care of them, because in reality, a sheep, cannot scratch his nose okay sheep can't really do too much they can't even feed themselves they're basically roaming around following other sheep okay and and they're always trying to find some type of food or something and they have flies and they have this and they have that and, and little bugs get in their nose and, and they can't go and scratch their face and do things that, that maybe maybe like a dog can do or, or whatever, but a sheep basically. So the shepherd comes along and takes care of them. He cleans out their nose. He, he uh, uh, at times when their wool gets too much, they have to be sh shaved everything off. Make sure that they eat as much as, you know, because if you just let them eat too much, what happens to them? They get too big. Hello? <laughs> you guys eat too much, you get too big. <laughs> huh? So so the sheep learn to put their trust into the shepherd. Because they know here he comes, he takes care of us, he watches over us. Versus one who's hired to do a job and sits under a tree and doesn't even care about the sheep. Do my eight hours, I'm gone. And there are many men in the world like that. You ever had somebody watch your kid? Huh? Have a brother watch your kid. I used to say, you know, hey, or, or, you know, watch the kid, you know? Yeah, leave him there. And then come back, the kid's in the middle of the street running around. Where do they go? Where are they at? I left you in charge. Oh, yeah, pay me my money. That's what... Most men are today. And we have a lot of hirelings that have been in and out of this ministry, at least. And so a sheep knows. I mean, the shepherd knows. Okay, the shepherd knows. this, And it becomes an intimate relationship between sheep and shepherd. And it's molded together by the union between God and the Son of Christ. Amen. Okay, the false shepherd just cares about himself. Doesn't put the work into the people. He's lazy. Doesn't care. You know, this is why when I come in and some of you guys will say, where you been out? You're in your room today, sleeping. Some of you just like to seclude yourself. Go hide somewhere. Well, that's what sheep do. Oh, but I want it. Well, how much do you want it? It's got to be on a constant, constant moving around. Constant always keeping aware and keeping evil out of your home. Because the temptation for you guys who are not leaders are tempted, amen, to cause strife. Mm. 
You're attempting to cause trouble. That's why little scourges happen in your lives. You like to stir up things, like to pump each other up, amen, or provoke one another. And then, where is the shepherd? He's sleeping. Well, why aren't you paying attention? Why aren't you? I don't know. It just happened. It just happened. No. How come you're not there cleaning their teeth and making sure nothing's in their nose? Come on, everybody has one of these. And so, the, you know, what you, you got to ask yourself, where do you fit in in this? Okay, because most people are just do a job, they're this, there. And there are those who, who are shepherds, they will get frustrated and mistreat the sheep. And they're out for their own. Okay? Every time you go out, the devil's out there trying to, trying to tempt you. Come on. Okay, and this is, the th this is the area of life. When David was a young boy, you know, God really cared about David. Amen. If you look at Psalms 23, book of Psalms, and this is comes from his heart. You know, you got you know, if you put the time in, and let me tell you something, I didn't like, when I was uh, 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 put in charge, I did not like it. I developed a burden for, for you. I developed this burden for you and many others like you. Many other brothers that I have been in the home with. But at first, I didn't. I wanted my time too. Why can I take a nap? Look at all these guys laying down. Why can I do this? Why can I do that? Why can me, 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 me? And then one time, amen, when I was praying and fasting, God showed me, care for your brother. This very scripture that Jesus says, amen, to Peter, amen, feed my lambs, watch your brothers, look out for them. It's something that, that you have to take to heart. Or is this just, I want to be a leader just for what? Okay, let's remove leader. I just want, you know, how many call yourself, which one are you, a father or a dad? I'll say there are fathers in here, not too many dads. What's the difference? What's the difference? If none of you can tell me, then, father, then you're not a dad. A father makes the child, but a dad takes care of it. There you go. Mm -hmm. A dad or daddy has intimacy. You always reach, you know, when your little babies call you daddy when they're small. You know how, like, when they can jump on you, you can be asleep, and they just come in the room and they jump on you. All right, when you're sitting there, they come sitting right next to you. All right? Or, or you know, they just want to be around you. Do you respond like, ah, get out of my way, I need my me time. Or is it like, come here. Or I'm playing a game right now, get them get away from me. So are, are you just a hired help or are you a daddy? Okay? So that's the way it is, amen, when you're doing this. It's responsibility. So I don't want to be a disciple. I don't want to even be a pastor. Well, you may not want to be, but I think that maybe that's what God wants for you. But your way you respond, the way you are living now, is never going to happen because you're into yourself. And the way you respond, amen, instead of being around where you're supposed to be around other people, you'd rather be by yourself. You're selective. Well, I want to hang out with this guy because he agrees with me. No, I like hanging around with this guy because he understands me. Instead of it, that's not the way Jesus did things. That's not the way God does things. You got to ask yourself, search your heart. Oh God, well, do I want this? Amen. Because there's only two roads for you. There's heaven and there's hell. You have to make a distinction which one you want to go to. David made a choice in his life. I will follow the Lord. Because false shepherds, amen, their hearts will show up. There are those who love to be bowed down to. Okay? There are those, amen, who just like the name leader. Okay? Or like, you know, I'm a father. I'm a father of five. Where are your kids at? I don't know. 
I think they're here. I think they're there. You here? Mm-hmm. Well, listen to what David does. David, When David was a young boy, caring for his father's sheep, his father's sheep, David dealt with many obstacles that when he was in the middle, out there, it meant tending sheep. I'm not going to get into what, what his father, the whole meaning, what he wanted to do with him. But this was the process. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, amen, let me tell you something about David. David had no fear because he had the Lord in his life. Okay? Whatever obstacle came his way, he dealt with the challenges because he cared. To you, they might be dumb animals, but to David, they were God's animals. Okay? Okay? To you, your brother or whatever, or congregation of people, you may not like, but they're God's people. No matter how many men who walked away from personally my own life or whatever, and I can say, man, I don't like that guy, or he's a traitor, or he's this, and they've got many of them, amen. But still, they are part of God's people. God says one day, God corrected me and said, you know what, you don't like them, but I do. Yeah, God, but look at the way they are, man. They're backstabbers, they're this, they're that, man. I can't stand that. They, want, they hurt kids, they do this, they do that. Man, God, come on. And, 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 and God says, yeah, well, those are still mine, and I'm still trying to reach them. God's still trying to reach them. So here, here's the responsibility, because David cared for God's sheep. And remember Moses. Moses had no idea what it was to be a shepherd. Okay? But a part of his father's business was what? Shepherding sheep. And he had to learn how to do that responsibility. What are you? First Samuel 17, verse 4. David says to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took, the, uh, took a lamb of the flock... He says, I went after him and struck it, delivered the lamb from, the, from his mouth. How many of us can do that? Hmm? How can we do that if we're not involved? You follow me? Mm-hmm. You can say all you want, but God says, you know what? Every, your life is with obstacles. Let me tell you, let me share something with you, all of you guys right now. You had obstacles before you even came here. Okay? You failed them. Right? You'd rather walk around the world than face responsibility. And then as you come as a Christian, you think, well, this is not supposed to happen. Yes, it is. Because the purpose that God does these op- obstacles in your life is, first of all, that you would cry out to him and trust him to take care of those things. Okay? As a Christian, they're called testings. And what are they, pers- what are they, supposed, to pr- uh, uh, what are they supposed to produce? Perseverance. Perseverance. And what else? Patience. Patience. Perseverance. Okay? Perseverance. Event. When you start saying, I don't care, and I, you know what, I'm tired of this, that's a red flag for me. You might as well just say, you know what, Jesus, forget you. I can't handle it. This is too much. That is not. That's how you handled your life. You know, I can't handle being a grandfather. I can't handle being a, uh, you know, I'd just rather be on my own. This is too much for me. Can't handle a relationship. I don't want, you know, I want to be married. I want all that. No, but hey, the challenges come your way. Then what do you know with? Let's go find another girl. That's not the answer. This is what the obstacles that come your way because God is trying to develop your patience, your perseverance, your loyalty. Your trustworthiness. And David had straight co- they had great confidence, not on his ability, but on the ability what God can do. Are you following me? Mm-hmm. What did I hear? Psalms 23? Yes, let's, let's just read this, what he said. Now here's a man who shares this. You see, there are 
many people who have written songs, this comes from the heart. This comes from the heart. Unless you can sing the song from the heart, amen, God will hear it. But if they're just words, he hears nothing. Amen. You know who hears it? You'll get an applause from people, but not applause from God. Amen. Worship is about worshiping God, not worshiping you. Amen. So when you're trying to impress a crowd or a people or a brother or whoever in the world, you'll get your reward. But the way God sees it is to please him. Amen. And it comes from the heart. Right. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Listen to this. And he says, he rests, he restores my soul. Leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And only a man who's helped David in a time of adversity can share these things. As a young boy. Remember, he's a young boy. Because he understood by past experiences that God would able to give him through anything. Okay? Every time I go through something, I say, Lord, I've been here before. I've been here before. I know what this is like. I know who's the cause of this. I know what this trial is all about. Every side, you know, I know every single one of you. You know why? Come on. No, I've seen you before. He's like, I've never seen you before, Pastor. I've seen you before. How is that? Come on, you gotta tell me. Same characteristics. Same characteristics. Same attitude, same function, same thing. You guys are identical to each other. You guys, you know what's funny? When you come and get mad at somebody for doing the same thing you do. That's the most hilarious thing to me. Right? No, I'm different. <laughs> I remember my, my leader, my pastor, I turn around and, Pastor, you don't know me. You know, I know you, Joe. No, 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 you don't know me, Pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm wacky, I'm crazy. I had a lot of wacky and crazy guys. They said, you, I may not know you, I know the characteristics. Okay? And, and, and I was like, wow. He, and he started telling me. I was like, you're insecure, you're this, you're that. It broke me. It broke me to tears. Because I felt God was telling me, this is you. And, and I am sitting there. And I was crying like a baby. It just, I mean, I was going, ah! But I mean, tears were just falling because I was being revealed. I'm over here thinking he doesn't know nothing about I mean, I wanted to tell him about me, and he already knew. And I felt that God was talking right to him, to me. In essence, that's what the truth is. Are you here? Yeah. And so, what he tries to teach us today, what, what Peter gets down to, okay, when we look at the life of, let's go back to, uh, let's actually turn to 2 Timothy. The responsibility of, of leading, okay? You know, it's the funniest thing uh, when I hear men, you come to the church and you know Pastor Joe, and, 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 and remember that little while we had that great uh, uh, revival, if you want to call it that, for a minute. Men started, people started coming, families started coming, it was getting pretty crowded in here. And then men started coming to say, I want what you want, I want to do what you do. Well, I take that serious. But after a while, you know, I have a leader. Let's stop right there for a second. 